Stay a while and listen. What is up everyone? Welcome to what is potentially a brand new series for on the channel if you guys do like it. It is just like those talkie videos I did recently, but it will have a bit more of a solid format. I may do it weekly, bi-weekly, something like that depending on the amount of news out there, but this right here is going to be called the Iron Diaper. I don't know what it is about Japanese robot designs, but they all seem to have stemmed from that particular original design, I'm not sure where it came from, with that side skirt, front skirt, back skirt, diaper armor. But anyway, I do not remember exactly who used the phrase. Someone put it in the comments of a video at one point. I did take a screenshot of it in order to give the guy all the credit for the awesome name, but I was doing some cleaning on my PC lately and must have deleted the screenshot. If any of you guys can find it, know where it is, on what video, Please tell me so I can take a screenshot of that and throw it up in the next episode of this. But anyway, as for what I'm going to be talking about today, this video is going to be split up into two segments. Well, maybe two and a half. The first will be Gundam news. Not just Gunpla, Gundam in general. Anything interesting that's happened in the week, anything that's coming up, any news that's been released, I'm going to talk about that. I'm not going to labor on things too long, try and keep it fast and snappy. The second half then will be completely and utterly dedicated to what is the backbone of this channel and that is Gunpla. What has just come out in Japan, what is coming out in Japan, any news, anything that's leaked, anything like that is what I'm going to talk about. And the extra half section that makes this I guess two and a half topics is I am going to be talking about why I think and am nearly certain that Gundam Hajiroboshi is 100% Gundam Barbatos. There has been some information released about that particular app game and I feel like in the translation something got screwed up which also screwed up my last video. The information I believe isn't quite right. But anyway, I'm going to leave that till pretty much the very end. First we're going to go through the news and see what's been happening in the world of Gundam and Gunpla in the last week and what is coming up. Of course, if you'd like to see anything else talked about in future episodes of this particular series, then drop that down in the comments. Do you want me to expand on anything? Talk about more things? Feature something? I don't know. Let me know down there in the comments. But anyway, let's get right into it. So the first bit of news I have is the trailer did drop last week for the upcoming Gundam trilogy of movies, Hathaway's Flash. So we're going to take a quick look through that trailer and see what's going on in it. It's already got over 400,000 views over on the Gundam Info channel, so more than likely you've seen it already. There isn't much to it, but let's check it out. So as for the trailer, it opens up on a beach, pretty nice looking beach, colony, earth, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know a whole lot about the novel Hathaway's Flash. So it seems like Hathaway Noah's got some sand in his shoes and he doesn't look too happy, does he? And I know that feeling, that feeling right there. That is the feeling you get when you know Bandai has put CG in your anime. So there we go right there, you can see what looks to be the Oryx 104FF Penelope or Gundam Penelope. And that right there is 100% CG. I know some of you guys do not mind CG in your anime. Personally, I feel like I don't like the whole mixed media thing. I don't think they gel too well, breaks my immersion. So that is just me, but everything there is CG. Clouds, water, the Gundam, so maybe this is just an example or something like that for the trailer that it won't actually be that way. Because if we skip back a little bit into that, if we actually move back to an earlier part of the trailer, we can see we have another mobile suit here. It's a bit cut off at the top but it does look like a potential grunt on a base jabber type thing. The only mobile suits that I know are in this, the info I got from the Gundam wiki. So is this a Gustav Karl on a Kisaria? Maybe, maybe not, I'm not too sure. Maybe someone said something down in the comments. Nope, there doesn't seem to be anything down there at all. So we've got that. Once again, we've got the Penelope right here. And apparently the first movie will be coming out sometime in winter, so pretty much a year to wait. Hopefully, less CG than it looks like right there. As for the next bit of Gundam news, you've probably heard this already, but apparently two executives from Bandai have been arrested for apparently embezzling money with the building of the giant Gundam statue. So this seems to be not the one we have right now, which is the unicorn, but the one that was before that. 
So apparently they just padded their expenses and just took the money. Honestly, when I do think of guys that would be involved with Gundam, they're the kind of people I do imagine The look right there. But anyway, next topic. So apparently a Japanese guy on Twitter called at Kuroken01 posted this video here of basically Gundam cosplay snowboarding. Pretty interesting, pretty funny. I'll put a link down there in the description so you can check that out. But it does seem like the whole Gundam cosplay snowboarding isn't necessarily a new thing because we do have a bunch of older videos from around 2016 and before of people snowboarding cosplaying as a Gundam. Pretty cool. Up next, are you like me and you're dying to see Gundam NT, the full version, not just the 23 minutes that are up on the YouTube channel? Well, are you not like me and live in the US? Well, if so, there is going to be limited theatrical releases of Gundam NT in the US. So, over on the website, Fathom Events, you can throw your zip code in there and see if it's going to be released near you somewhere. And apparently it will be coming out on February the 19th, which is pretty cool. But on the negative side, it does say they're dubbed. I'm not sure about you, but I prefer my anime subbed. There is a trailer up in the corner there, so I'm not sure exactly what the dub will be like. So maybe it is, maybe it isn't, I'm not sure. But check out that website if you want to see if you can see Gundam NT somewhere near you. Next topic. So as for the last news topic, which isn't necessarily news, it's just me assuming something. And that is that Gundam Hajiroboshi is 100% Definitely Gundam Bar Battles and why, but again, I will leave that till the very end, so let's get into some Gunpla news. Okay, so if you've watched any of these kind of videos I've made in the past, you'll recognize this page right here. It's the Bandai Hobby site page. Of course, the link right there is bandaihobby.net forward slash schedule, and you'll get the different months of the year saying what will be released. So they have finally put these in order. Last time I spoke about them, they were in no particular order. So we can see when things are coming out. It is a bit of a lean month. A bit, but not much. So what has come out already in the first week of January was the Haropla, or Jarja, and the Petite Guy, Kiara Guy, Ayame. But they're not the ones I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to talk about what just came out on January 19th, that was last Friday in Japan. And of course, that is the awesome looking Master Grade Sinanju Stein narrative version, as well as the High Grade Build Divers 144th scale GBN Base Gundam. And a couple of things have changed here. Not a lot, but let's look through them quite quick. So, my Sinanju Stein is on the way to me right now. It may take a while, but hopefully I'll be able to get the review of that up by the weekend. If you guys are interested, I may consider reviewing the Master Grade Standard Sinanju Stein. Not this one, the older one. I've been thinking a lot lately about going into older kits that I have that may not be fully complete, might be missing some parts, I might not have all the weapons handy, they might be in a box somewhere where I don't know. A kind of faster, less in-depth kind of review of older kits that I have. Just to give you a general gist of whether it's worth getting or not. I can already tell you right now that the Sin and Juice Stein is definitely worth getting. This one looks awesome as well and I can't wait to see it. Hopefully that's not a sticker there on the shield, looks like it might be. But if you'd like to see videos like that, let me know. If in the meantime you want to see some real, in-depth, decent pictures of Gundam kits as soon as they come out, I cannot recommend this website enough. This is the Schizophonic blog. This guy will get it up instantly. Sure, everything written there is in Japanese, but as you can see, everything is so clear that you don't really need to read it at all. And as you can see right there, this has a lot of stickers for the sleeves iconography. That does suck. A master grade in this day and age should be part separated, not like that. So there's what it will look like built. Of course, this is the Schizophonic blog. I will put that down there in the description for you to check it out yourself. But all in all, it does look awesome, but suffers from that same issue the standard Sinanju had, which is you need a lot of stickers to make up for the fact that Bandai could not have been arsed separating the parts. And considering the real grade separate the parts, I really think they should have taken the steps to just separate out that white. But anyway, you're going to have to be sticking on stickers or you're going to have to be painting it. But besides that, what else just came out was the GBN Base Gundam, and all I can say is I am so happy. They've taken the pearlescent away by the looks of things. The last time I spoke about this, all this white section was completely in pearl. It still has those 
fluorescent strange colors that are like the higher than sky phase double O sky but as long as it's not pearlescent I am very happy that looks good if you didn't see my other video I did mention that this is based on the leopard da Vinci in which the Jim Jim was based on and the GBN guard frame are based on all are awesome super simple posable kits that are just so fun to play around with if you look at the cover of the box there you can see it's got the GBN guard frames behind it so this guy will be the perfect partner in crime for with your GBN guard frames or your Jim Jims. All in all, this kit looks like a great start for a custom Gunpla because it's your standard looking Gundam, but on top of that, it's got the amazing articulation and build, I assume, I haven't seen it yet, I assume it has the amazing articulation and build that the Jim Jim and the GBN guard frame had. All in all, pretty cool. So that's what came out last Friday. As for what's coming out this week, this Friday, most of the releases aren't Gunpla, as you can see. There's a lot of Star Wars, some figureized kits including Ultraman and some Dragon Ball kits, but what we're getting but what we're getting Gundam wise and robot wise, first up is the SDBD RX Zero Maru Sinki Keisho. Is that what it actually says? This has been translated by the Bandai hobby site itself. And actually, while I'm mentioning the fact that this has been translated, I saw this earlier on, and I thought it was absolutely brilliant. And that is this right here, this line. From Gundam Build Divers, GBN operated, GBN base frame, Gundam is kitizized. Kitizized. That is a word I am taking forever. So that's just a translation. Down here in the corner, you can see that the Bandai Hobby site translates things to English automatically itself. And that, if we go back to the Japanese, was this right here, which is kitto ka. At least I think that's ka. That is the kanji for to make or become or to revert to which is uh, usually like kasuru, or kasaru, I think. But anyway, that on this side gets translated to kitizized. That is a word we need to use from here on out. But anyway, back to what I was talking about, which is the Oryx Zero Maru. And I never did review the original Zero Maru that came out because it didn't get sent to me. And then when I tried to order, it was already sold out. So I will be looking at that just to make up for the one that I didn't get to see. Next up, not quite a Gundam, but we're also getting the High Grade Gypsy Avenger Final Battle specification. This is the exact same kit we saw before. I did do a review of that kit if you want to check that out. It's just a color variant and parts variant of that one. And then the last thing we get is the High Grade HWS and SV Custom Weapon Set. So this is just the SV set that came with the H2 Magnum SV version and the HWS set that came with the Gundam 00 Sky HWS Trans Am Infinity Mode kit. So of course you can use these with the standard color variants of those Gundams, like the one that did come out, at least the HWS, with the Trans Am Infinity Mode was in that pearlescent plastic. So this is just your standard color to use with other high grade kits. So not really all that exciting. So that is what came out last week, what's coming out next week. And besides that, that is all for this month. There is a bunch of P Bandai kits, but I did talk about them before in a previous video, so you can check that one out if you want to see that. But anyway, that's enough about what we know is coming out. There has been some big announcements of what will be coming out in the future, so let's take a look at them right now. So from here on out, all the information I've gotten for this is from the Gundam.info website, as well as the Gundam Kits Collection website. I'll mention which website it's from each time I talk about something. So there has been a bunch of new Gundam kits announced literally on Saturday. So two days ago, these were announced. They're announced both on the Japanese version of Gundam.info as well as the English one. There is the URL in case you want to go there. Of course, that is en.gundam.info. And let's not waste any more time. Let's check out what has been announced. So the first thing, as you can see right there, is the Master Grade 1100 S Gundam and XS Gundam. Now hold up, don't get too excited because as far as I know and as far as people are saying, this is just the old version of the Gundam, or should I say S Gundam or XS Gundam from quite a while ago. These are big, heavy, personally I've never built one, but from what I've heard, they're not that awesome out of the box. It's something that should have gotten a 2.0 and instead of getting a 2.0, they're releasing both Gundams in the one box. And you're like, whoa, two Gundams in the one box? That is awesome. No, no, no. That is not what's happening here. Uh, partly what's happening in this box is more of a Gundam 1100 Gushion kind of thing. So basically you get the Gundam as well as all the armor parts to make it into the excess Gundam. So you basically choose one or the other. And this is coming in at a price point of 
12,000 yen. So that is a spicy meatball right there. So there is no choice to buy one or the other. You're stuck with both and then a bunch of leftover parts for the other variant. So that is a little bit of a disappointment as well as the fact that this is just an old kit in a new color. This seems like something that should be a P Bandai kit, not necessarily a full release. Honestly, I've always meant to delve back into the Master Grade catalog and grab the XS Gundam. It's so big, so awesome looking. Sure, if it can't stand up, it doesn't really matter if it's got a big stand like that. So I'm looking forward to that. To those of you who have built those kits, the standard Master Grade XS and standard Master Grade S Gundam, drop down in the comments right now what advice you'd give to someone who's building these new. Are they worth it? Are they good? What's their pros? What's their cons? Let us know. So next up on the list of big announcements is the high grade 144th scale Maganak from Gundam Wing. Honestly, I did not think this would be the next high grade Gundam Wing release. I thought it'd be something like the Ares or something like that, but I suppose this kit does have quite a bit in common with the Leo, so it might share some parts like the joints, some parts of the legs potentially because it is quite similar. So that right there is a pretty cool announcement, even if it just means that they're going ahead with the 144th scale high grade wing grunts. That to me is a good sign. I want to see a lot more of those. Moving on through the list and we've got some more SD Gundam cross silhouettes. These are those SD Gundams that have a little inner frame. A lot of the time, if not most of the time, the inner frame is sold separate to the armor. And what we got here is and forgive me if I screw up this name, I'll flip on over to the Japanese here just so I can get it in the kana. And it says here, Siskud? Siskud. Sisquid. I'm not sure. So if you're like me and you've absolutely no idea what this mobile suit right here is, then let's flip on over to the Gundam Wiki. And apparently this is a mobile suit from a game called SD Gundam G Generation, as well as a manga called SD Gundam G Generation Manoai Gundams. And apparently, this is a non-canonical version of the Universal Century timeline, and this was developed at the same time as the Oryx 178 Gundam Mark II. Therefore, that means it is a Titans mobile suit, and just like the Mark II, we've got Titans colors and the AEUG colors. So if it is from an SD game, it makes sense that it's an SD kit. I would love to see a high grade of this, it's pretty cool. With them releasing a lot of Zeta manga stuff, especially from Advance of Zeta, like the Gundam Hazel, as well as the Gundam Wound Wart, it would be cool to see some of these as well. And yeah, it does have a mono eye, pretty cool. Next up, and not really that big of news, is the high grade Zaku 2 C6 or 6 type. So this is another Origins Zaku. I did make a video before about one of the variants of the Origin Zaku and I love that kit. I don't keep many of the high grades that I build because I don't really have the space for them, but this is one that stays with my favorites like the Jim Jim. The Origin version of the Zaku is so damn awesome. And really, can you have enough Zakus? I don't think so. And coming hand in hand with that is another Origin version of the high grade Zaku, which is just an updated box of Char Aznavil's variant of it. So this right here, as far as I've seen, is the exact same kit that was released a few years ago, just with a new weapon and some new decals. Basically, if you have the Origin Zaku already, well, this is pretty much the same thing. And last, and by no means least, is the high-grade Destiny Revive. This isn't called the Destiny Revive, but that's exactly what it is. And look at what this box is packing in. Not only is it a brand new version of the High Grade Destiny, but you also get the Wings of Light with it too. And they look absolutely awesome. That energy looks like it's tearing up, just really flowing out. Not your standard just pointy effect part. They've really put some effort into making that look cool. And that is not the only effect part we get in here. So taking a roll down through the pictures of what comes in here, this is looking so good so far. There are those beam effect wings, and there is what we get in it. So we get those beam boomerang effects, the shield effect, and as well as all of that, we get another effect part, and forgive me while I butcher this word, for the Palma Fiokina. At least that's what it says in the Katakana. But I love to see things like this. More effect parts in the box makes me happy, but at the same time, this is quite pricey. Coming in at 2,376 yen, this is the price of an early real grade. But then again, I guess you get what you pay for. So next up, over to Gundam Kit's collection to see another announced kit, which of course is the Premium Bandai TR6 Hazel 2, or what it looks more like is the Woundwart 2. 
So that looks pretty cool in those real classic Titans colors. And speaking of the wound wart, when I asked you guys in the community tab what you would like to see, or should I say, if you could own one P Bandai kit, what would it be? A lot of you guys said the wound wart, so that will be coming up on the channel soon. And I will mention more about that in future. Next on the P Bandai announcements, we've got a pearlescent version of the Master Grade Crossbone Full Cloth. And personally, I feel if you want to make a Gundam kit look 100 times worse, make it in pearlescent. Make it look as cheap as possible. So this was a Gundam base exclusive, but it will be put onto the P Bandai site to be bought by, I guess, a bigger tiny market. But either way, if you need yourself a pearlescent crossbone, then that is where you'll find it. And the last bit of Gundam news I'm going to leave till the very, very, very end of this video, which is this guy right here, because it does involve some spoilers, so I'll get to that later. So now onto the main event of this video, and for me at least, this is the main event of the video. I believe that Gundam Hajiroboshi from the new Iron-Blooded Orphans app is 100% Gundam Barbatos. A lot of you guys have been saying similar things as well, and now I entirely believe that for one reason. This right here is the article I referenced last time for the information about this upcoming app which has anime features built into it. It's still just an app, it still has the anime built into it in some form or another, but there is a bit of a screw up or oversight, I should say, in this article that I looked into a little bit more. And a lot of other English language articles say the exact same thing. And what that is is, the spin-off's story is set in the year PD 323, the same year as a TV anime story. So that kind of kills all the fan theories that the main character, right there, Wistario Afam, it kills the theory that he is, in fact, Akasuki August. Of course, he is the son of one of the main characters, Mikazuki and Atra, and you would assume straight away that it is the same character. Pretty much same color eyes, very similar colored hair, and all in all, even the shape of the hair is pretty much identical. But if it takes place at the same time, PD323 as it says there, then that cannot be true. So I went down to the bottom, I was like, this doesn't make a lick of sense. Especially because that is a very familiar looking Gundam there. So we go all the way down to the bottom and I check out their sources. Their sources are the actual app's website, as well as this Yaraon. So I took a look at them. First one, this Yaraon, besides all its super sketchy ads, is just a fan's reaction to the announcement as it's going along. It says absolutely nothing anywhere in this about the year that it is set in. The particular person does automatically assume that the main character right there is Mikazuki's son, as you would but it does not mention a date. Then if we move on over to the official website of the app, right there over in the side, we've got Mikazuki on the left, the new character on the right, and that's a bit questionable, right? But anyway, we zoom on down, or should I say scroll on down, to the actual plot right here. So this is basically what all the websites are referencing. At the top there it says PD323. And this goes on about Gallarhorn and Tekadan and all that sort of stuff that happened. That is said in PD323. The next line right here says something completely different. It says that the main character, Wisterio, on this particular colony, heard about what they did. Heard. Past tense. Ita. That right there says Tooide Ita. And that means to have been notified of, or to have heard of, or to be made aware of, and that is past tense. Again, my Japanese is rough, it's conversational at best, but as far as I know, and when I looked into it, that is pretty much what it's saying. So it is not saying that this is set in PD-323, the Tekadan stuff happened in PD-323, and that he had heard about it. So if we go back to the plot, and about the character, he's an orphan, would make sense. After the run-in with Gallarhorn and all that stuff, I'm pretty sure that Mikazuki and Atara, they wouldn't necessarily want to keep a baby on hand, right? And if all that happened on Mars, Tekadan are on Mars, well, Venus makes sense being on the absolute other side of the Earth. Put the baby somewhere completely and utterly different. So if it is set in the future, that would mean that this is Akatsuki, which you would expect, and that would make this right here Gundam Barbatos. Why else would they change the name? Every Gundam has a demonic name, a demon name. Gundam Kimaris, Gundam Barbatos, Gundam Bale, 
The only one that didn't was Gundam Vidar because it was made up to look like a different Gundam to hide the fact that it was Gundam Kimaris. So they're hiding the fact that this is a known Gundam. What other Gundam would they hide that would make sense, especially compared to a character that looks like this besides Gundam Barbatos? So that is why I 100% and that is why I 100% believe that Gundam Hajiroboshi is Gundam Barbatos and this is what everyone expected and that is Mikazuki's kid. So all in all, I just think it was a bunch of bad translations, potentially, that screwed up that kind of timeline. Maybe. I may be completely wrong. Let me know in the comments what you think. And the last thing I'm going to mention in this video, and this will have some spoilers for Gundam NT, so if you do not want to get spoiled for Gundam NT, then you might as well click off this video now and go to another one. But if you don't really care, more than likely you may know this already, especially if you're keeping up with Gunpla releases, and Bandai tends to spoil plot points by releasing Gunpla really early compared to the series or movies it's based on. So if you're still here, I guess you're ready to get spoiled or you know already. So back to the Gundam Kits collection for this right here. So this right here is the high grade Silver Bullet. So this has also been announced as well. This is just a prototype so it hasn't been officially announced yet. But the interesting thing about this is this is a Banner Lynx custom from the movie Gundam NT. So maybe you've been lucky enough to see the movie already. I haven't. I can't wait to see it. But there isn't really any easy legal way to see it just yet. But of course, what that means is Banner Lynx is in Gundam NT. But anyway, about the Silver Bullet, the Silver Bullet is this mobile suit right here that was in Gundam Unicorn. Such an absolutely awesome looking mobile suit. Does this count as a Gundam? It's not a Gundam, is it? Is Silver Bullet a Gundam? With the name ARX at the beginning, ARX 014, it seems more so that maybe it jumped out of a different anime, being Full Metal Panic, but that is a very uniquely Gundam head. At least it was, until it got blown up and smashed. But I will mention that in the third trailer, or I think it's the third trailer of Gundam NT, we do get to see the Banner Lynx custom silver bullet in action, and as you can see, it's got the beam magnum. And one cool thing about this is, because the Magnum is so powerful, it destroyed the arm of the Delta Plus when it shot it once, it seems to be that the Silver Bullet right here, at least the Banner version of the Silver Bullet, may have multiple arms or a different system in order to keep firing it without getting absolutely destroyed. But anyway, that is the last thing I have to talk about. Once again, if you like this video, hit that like button, let me know down in the comments. If there's anything you'd like to see changed, anything else featured, would you like it longer, shorter, faster, slower, let me know. As always, thank you very much for watching. As for what will be coming up in the channel this week, if you want, I could take a look at the Master Grade Sinanju Stein really quickly, just before the Master Grade Sinanju Stein narrative version drops. As for other kits I need to look at, in my backlog right now, if there's anything you'd like to see from this, which would you like to see first? I've got the high grade shining break. I've got the master grade polypod ball I need to get back to. I've got the next batch of Nekobuso kits to look at. And finally, there's two kits that I've been meaning to get around to for over a year now. And that's the master grade gym sniper custom and the ugh, that thing. So let me know what you guys would like to see coming up soon. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla news and reviews. And I'll see you next time.